Hey there. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching how to display information from your program or how to output to a console. And I'm making this guide or this tutorial for those people who downloaded my personalized finance app programming guide. And in that guide, basically what I do is I teach you how to take your credit card transactions and categorize them into different budget categories for so that you know how much you're spending. And if that sounds like a fun project for you, you can download it in the link in the description. And this tutorial is going to be in C and that's because whenever I teach someone how to program, I think it's best for them to learn C first because once you learn C, it's easier to learn other programming languages. And C is a classic language to learn. All right, let's get started. All right, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code and if you don't know how to set that up, you can watch one of my first videos, how to start coding for beginners. So let's start with our C file. So let's create a C file, call it displayinfo.c. All right, now let's put in pound include to include our standard input output library. This is a standard library that you can use for your programs. Then we're going to do int main. We're going to create the main function. And then we're going to start with how do we print? So let's do a, a basic print. And basically, if you want to display information to your console, you use printf. And we can type whatever we want. Usually the basic example is hello world. And then we return zero because this function is of type int. Main is a function that is of type int. So we just have to return zero at the end of our program. So this is the basic structure for your C file. So let's run this and see what happens. Okay, so in order to get rid of this percent sign, we just have to add a new line character. And the new line character just says that we want the program to add in another line because the program ends here we want it to end down here. So let's just add in a new line character. It's a special character that tells the program to create a new line. And you'll see what I mean when I run this code. Okay. So now it's gone. The percent sign is gone. It just says hello world. And if you want to add more, more new line characters, or you want to add more spaces or more, more lines, you just add another new line character and then you run it again. There you go. And you add another, it adds another line and then you can keep going. You can do three and there you go. So that's how that works. So here you only have one new line. You only have one empty line and now here you have two empty lines. So you need this one. The first one is to create a new line after the hello world message. Then you need another new line character for the new, for the first one. And then for the second one, and then we can actually add some before as well. Let's run this, see what happens. All right. So it added an, a line before the hello world and say we want to put, we can actually put one in the middle, you just right in the middle. And then it's going to say hello and then world. See, hello, and then there's a new line character there, and then world. Okay, I also want to introduce another special character, and this is a tab character. Basically, it adds a tab. So let's see what it looks like. All right, so instead of it being a new line, it's like another tab. You can add more and see what happens. Okay, so you see that? So you're adding tabs there. And this is particularly useful when you have a new line character and you want the world to be on, to be indented. So if you, you add a new line character for the new line and then you add a, a tab character for the indent and then you can see what happens. Okay. And then we can add another message to say, this is a cool tutorial, right? See, so it's also indented. So those are the main, those are the main special characters that you need to know. And just an extra tip. A lot of times I like to do this to make my code look nicer. I just add in some, a bar, like a divider, and then add a new line character and then run that. All right, so now I have a, a, a divider. 
and I don't want it to be inter interacting with this, these, these text. So I'm just going to add in a new line character there as well. And let's remove this new line character so that the hello is right underneath the divider. And then there you go. And I want to add one at the end too. So let's add one at the end. There you go. Now you can see your program display information is contained within these two dividers. So that's just some formatting tip for you. Now how to display information from your program. So let's create some information, some data for, from our program. I'm going to do the, the data types that I covered last week. So that's going to be an int. So let's do number of dogs. Say in our program we had five dogs. And we just want, this is how you display the number of dogs. And you can actually look at my last tutorial for more information. Let's put a indentation here. Then use percent %d for your ints. And then you specify which variable you want to, you're telling your program which, which int to use. Okay, so the number of dogs is five. You can put a period here because it's a sentence. I want to remove the hello world. I want to put it in one line. Okay, that looks better. This is why I like programming because you can, it's fun to see your program change whenever you make changes. All right, let's keep going. So let's do float my money. See, I have a hundred bucks or maybe a hundred hundred and bucks and 50 cents. Maybe 51 cents. Then we're going to make another. We're going to display how much money we have. Let's say my bank balance. And then we'll use G for float. And then we're going to specify. We're going to specify which variable to use, my money. Okay, so my bank balance, percent %g, and then you're telling your program which, which variable corresponds to the float that you wanna print. Percent %g corresponds to my money. I forgot to put the dollar sign. Okay. This is a cool tutorial, my number of dogs, the number of dogs is five and my bank balance is hundred dollars and fifty one cents and then you can change it to double because double is better for calculations it's more precise you can see my previous video about data types to get more background knowledge about that okay still displays the same money okay now let's do char and my name and then if you want to print my name just put My name is, and then percent %s, my name. Percent %s is for string. And then you specify what string you want to print. My name. Oh, I forgot. See, there's no new line character. I need a new line character here. So you do, you do the new line character. Yeah, there you go. I forgot the I forgot to indent it. All right, cool. So when you're writing your program, you're going to have these variables in your program and it's going to be for your budget app, your finance app. Then this is how you would print it. You just use print F and see it's really simple. And just so for a bonus, there's actually another special character called end of string character. And basically you're telling the end of the string 
through this. It's like it's kind of like the backslash and backslash t. When you do backslash zero, it's you're telling the compiler that this is the end of the string, the end of string character. So let's run this. Okay, my name is Henrik. It's still, I mean, that makes sense because Henrik is the end of the string. But you know, if we actually move this to here, you're now telling when the compiler is gonna print my name, you're gonna print hen. And then it's gonna say, oh, there's a new there's an end of string character. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go only up to hen. So let's see what happens. Alright. So now it just says my name is hen. It's because you're telling the compiler that the end of the string is at, at n after hen. So if we move this somewhere else, like here, now it's just my name is he. All right, but when you're starting out how to program, don't worry about this too much, but it's good as background information, background knowledge. And as you get better at programming, you'll start to use this end of string character. All right, last tip of last tip for today is yeah, make sure when you do use your printf, it's nice to have it. Uh, you don't want to put too much information in one printf statement. I mean, technically, I could put this whole thing up here. You can technically just put it up here, and then you'll you can run this code. You can run this code like this, and you get the same output. But it's just a headache to look at it. I mean, it just doesn't look. It doesn't feel good just looking at it. You have to keep scrolling back and forth. So it's useful to just do it like this. Uh, you can even split this one out some more to make it more. It's not so that it's not an eyesore. You can actually sp you can split this out even more, and then that way it looks more. So every line has a end of line character and every beginning of the indents has that the tab character and I mean it's gonna print the same information but it, lo it looks easier it's easier to read that way all right I added my C file in github I'll link it in the description so if you want to play with it you can just look at it here and I hope it helps you out all right, that's it for this tutorial. I hope it really helps you out in your personalized finance app programming guide, or if you're just starting to learn how to use C, I hope this really helps you out. If there's anything you want me to cover for your next project, let me know in the comments and then I can make some more tutorials for you. All right, peace.